So I tested Apple TV's new color balance feature on LG, Samsung and Sony TVs, using a mastering monitor worth £30,000 as a reference. It improved the colors in some cases, but there are four main issues that stop it from being a good replacement for actual calibration. Let me show you. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everyone, Vincent Leo from HDTV Test here. TVOS 14.5 has added a new color balance feature on the Apple TV 4K box, which is supposed to calibrate the color output of the box itself based on measurements of several color patches using the front-facing light sensor on a compatible iPhone. Using an Apple TV 4K box, the old one, not the new one, and an iPhone 12 Pro, I tested the color balance feature on a 55-inch LG C9 OLED TV, a 55-inch Samsung Q80T QLED TV, and a 55-inch Sony X690 LED LCD TV, which is also marketed as the Bravia X900H in the USA. I even ran the procedure on a Sony BVM HX310 dual-layer LCD mastering monitor with reference class color accuracy when targeting the 65 white point, and was surprised to find that the Apple TV plus iPhone combo thought the monitor wasn't accurate enough, and proceeded to adjust the color output from the Apple TV 4K box. And therein lies the first problem. On LED LCD displays, the results of the color balance feature gravitated towards a bluer white point than the D65 standard used within the film and broadcast industry. To demonstrate this issue, I set up the Sony mastering monitor as reference, purposely using the original rather than the balanced result. Of course, to make this side-by-side -side comparison possible, I needed two units of the Apple TV 4K box, which is fortunately one of the few items I have in pairs alongside two copies of Power Rangers 4K Blu-rays, which I can't seem to get rid of, not even on eBay with free postage thrown in. First up was the Samsung Q80T QLED LCD TV, which I left in filmmaker mode, the most accurate out-of-the-box picture preset. As I toggled between the original and the balanced results, the balanced version which had been tuned by Apple's color balance technology actually appeared bluer than the original image. Objective measurements confirmed this blue shift too, as you can see from these before and after grayscale charts I recorded on the Samsung Q80T using test patterns sent from the Apple TV 4K box. Despite a bluer grayscale, the Apple TV 4K box managed to tweak the colors to lower the color inaccuracies slightly, judging from these saturation tracking charts measured before and after the color balance process, which showed a small drop in delta errors. Next up was the Sony XH90 or X900H in its most accurate custom picture preset, and again it is the same story. After running the color balance procedure, the balance result yielded a picture that's cooler than the original as we switched back and forth using Apple's sandy beach scene to compare. This bluer tint was also borne out by grayscale measurements. On your left is the original result. On your right is the balance result after running the color balance feature. And unlike what happened with the Samsung Q80T, color accuracy actually got worse on the Sony XH90, with an increase in delta errors on these color saturation tracking charts due to the cooler grayscale. Last but not least, we went through the same process with an LG C9 OLED TV in its most accurate Technicolor Expert picture mode. And fortunately, the color balance technology reduced grayscale errors slightly contributing to improved color accuracy with lower delta error figures, although still nowhere near the accuracy of a properly conducted calibration using specialized tools and software. The different results between OLED and LED LCD display technologies also highlighted another fundamental shortcoming of the color balance technology, which is the lack of profiling for different display technologies. There are several types of televisions on the market, such as LED LCDs with traditional backlight or PFS phosphor backlight, QLED TVs with quantum dot enhancement film, and WRGB OLED televisions, and even then, there has been a slight change on certain 2021 OLEDs due to the addition of a new green emitting layer. All these different display technologies have different spectral power distribution or SPD, so to obtain an accurate result in terms of luminance and color measurements, a colorimeter needs to be profiled against a spectral radiometer. Here, I am using a colorimetry research CR100 tristimulus colorimeter profiled to a CR250 narrowband spectral radiometer, 
a combination that cost a pretty penny. But that's what I consider to be the minimum level of equipment required of a professional calibrator worth hiring. Talking of which, I'm in the process of putting together a calibration service in partnership with a UK electrical retailer. And this information website has been created using Squarespace, an all-in-one platform that makes it super easy to build your online presence. Any website you create will be mobile optimized, which means it will look great on a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or computer monitor. You will also gain access to analytics and SEO tools to grow your business. So if you are looking to start a website or an online store, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash HTTV test to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again for your support. Anyway, the iPhone used to measure the color patches on screen won't be profiled to a spectral radiometer, which is probably why the color balance technology gave different results for OLEDs and LED LCDs. It is possible for Apple to identify the television through the edit and then apply the necessary EDR offset based on the known spectral response of the display technology. But whether the television manufacturer is supplying the correct edit and whether Apple is willing to go through the hassle of doing that is of course another matter altogether. The more savvy among you may also have noticed that we were using the most accurate out-of-the-box picture presets on these televisions. If you started off with a more inaccurate picture preset, such as standard mode which was much bluer on LG OLEDs, then performing color balance through the Apple TV 4K box would definitely bring the colors closer to the D65 white point used within the film and broadcast industry. However, because large adjustments were applied to the source output to correct the originally huge inaccuracies, some posterization was introduced into the picture, as you hopefully can see from these before and after shots of color ramps in spite of YouTube's compression. This also brings us to the next limitation of Apple's color balance technology. It may seem obvious, but since color balance only adjusts the color output on the Apple TV 4K box, all your other sources won't be calibrated, if you can call what color balance does a calibration. A proper calibration is more than just tweaking brightness and colors. When I calibrate a TV, the full process involves setting the correct video black level, making sure the near black gamma tracks well for accurate reproduction of shadow detail, disabling overscan for 1 1 pixel mapping, turning off superfluous edge enhancement and noise reduction, optimizing motion interpolation for movies and sports content depending on my client's needs, calibrating separate day and night modes for daytime and nighttime viewing respectively. Most of these adjustments have to be done on the TV itself, and cannot be addressed by the Apple TV 4K box. At the end of the day, Apple's color balance technology can potentially improve the color output from the Apple TV 4K box, but there is no way to 100% tell unless you can put a meter on screen, in which case you might as well calibrate your television the traditional way. Also, large adjustments through the color balance technology can introduce posterization in some content, while not addressing other video and motion processing missteps on the television itself, which is why selecting the most accurate out-of-the-box picture preset on your TV is significantly more important than running the color balance procedure. If you would like to watch more of our technical videos on Apple products, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video.